branding versus marketing versus advertising versus sales. You are now tuned in to the Marketing Club, where we are borderline 350,000 members. To be exact, we have, I'm going to give you the numbers right now, 349,554 members. Do you know what that means? It means that we are lit. And we're here to teach, we're here to learn, we're here to grow, we're here to just give you some really good insights as a business because there are things that you want to do, you want to own, you want to understand, you want to grow, but more importantly, you want to know how you as a business can can grow. What are the things that you can do right now as a business? What are the things that you can do that you can actually give value for and people can remember you because of what you said? So... I'm here to help you understand, break down, break through, and also break out of the the norm. And what's that norm? The norm is, you know, I have a website and I don't know what's going on. I'm just paying it every year and I'm not seeing any sales or results. The reason why is because there's no intellectual property that you can own that can direct somebody to where you want them to be. So if you want someone to be somewhere, you got to direct them and, and take them there. You know, it's not like something you have to consistently push down their throat, but you also have to know exactly where are you taking people? Why are you even taking them there? And if you're taking them there, what's the reason? And if there's a solid reason, there has to be some type of attachment to it. So this room is going to help you understand how to tell the difference between branding, marketing, advertising, and sales. We're going to cover them individually and I'll make sure that I break them down in a way that people that are listening, including you who's hearing it right now, is paying attention to what is coming and how you should also position yourself as a business. Even if you think about branding, there are ways that you can brand yourself as a business that people can remember you for. It could be how you say things. It could be your signature sound. It could be your sound effects. It could be your colors. It could be your mantra. It could be the words that you say. It could be a song. It could be maybe your signature, you know, in your emails. There could be something that you're using, maybe an emoji that you're constantly using consistently to get people's attention. And anytime you use it, you know that this is the audience that you're referring to. So using this kind of branding and marketing tactic, it is consistently a way to stay on top of mind, right? Welcome, Fee and Chris. Thanks for being here. When you have a consistent pathway to success, then the roadmap you're building is going to lead people to a way that they can also find experience, right? Because branding, honestly speaking, branding is one of the most important assets before you even make a sale, right? Before you make a sale, that sale is because there is brand awareness. Welcome, Abena Berry. That means there is a brand. Before you pay anything, you also need to know what you're paying for. Because it's going to be on your statement, right? It's going to be on your bank statement. It's going to say, this is what you paid for. This is the brand that you paid. If you went to Kroger, Walmart, Target, Tiffany's, wherever you go, right? You will find a way to match it back to the brand. Whether it's the parent company or the subsidiary or uh, an affiliate, whatever it is, there's a brand attached to it, right? There's a sticker, there's a logo, there's some type of standard attached to it. So before you get to sales, we have to think about the brand. The marketing and the advertising is the mixing point. You know how you think about marketing mix? Welcome, Dr. Fashion. You know, there's a marketing mix. So with that marketing mix, if you're able to know what your marketing mix is, then your advertising gets easier because you know who you're advertising to. When you think about an advert, right? Advert, advertising, it is 
the consistency of, let me put it this way to make it easier. Advertising is showing a brand that already exists and you're just marketing that brand through an advertisement. If that makes sense. An advertisement is a TV advertisement, a radio advertisement, a news advertisement, a publication, just to say a PCA, hey, we're here, you know, look at us. That's advertising because you are, you're keeping them top of mind, but you've been marketing all along. The advertisement is not the marketing. The marketing brings the advertisement, if that makes sense. If you're not marketing every day, how can you advertise what you're not marketing? So you have to market consistently so that the market that you're consistently talking to, right, is aware of what you're saying. It's market for a reason, right? Adverts, what is an advert? You can Google that. But if you type in what is a market, you can also get that answer too. What is a brand? What is a sale? How do you get a sale? Do you sell consistently? And, and what is that sale doing? What's that sale doing? Is it a front end sale? Is it a back end sale? Like, is it a pre purchase? Is it a pre order? Is it a pre download? Like, what is it? Because when you think about the purchases and the sales, it's not just 100%. You could be 70%. It could be net 60. It could be anything, right? But it has to come from a standpoint. So, we're going to touch on these four today and see which one you're in or which one you're using more and how you can leverage them all too. Hey, Dr. Fashion, good morning. How are you? Good morning, um, and I'm doing great. Loving the topic today. Yay, yay, you know what? Let people know who you are for those who are hearing you for the first time. Yeah, my name is Brittany, but I also go by Dr. Fashion. I do so many different things, but people mainly know me for my YouTube channel, which is called Dr. Fashion. And I also work with content creators, helping them to um, secure brand deals. And I work with Fortune 500 companies such as Target, Walmart, YouTube, and more. So that's a little bit about me. And you can check out my IG. Hey, thank you, Dr. Fashion. Appreciate you. Yeah, for those who are listening to uh, for the first time, I also help brands build systems to elevate their success online by applied search engine optimization tactics. And that comes through an array of different platforms that we use, like podcasts, Pinterest, and we and also LinkedIn too, which is a really great cornerstone for your business too. So this all comes in to say that, you know, the things that we're talking about, like when Dr. Fashion was talking about the brands, you know, those brands, because you've heard about them before. You've probably seen an advert before. You've probably seen them marketing something. You've seen them on your Instagram or your, your TikTok. You've seen them somewhere. You've probably seen them on the road. You've seen them in the store. So it's, a, it's an awareness phase that you've already got, you know, gotten used to because you already know the brand you're connecting with. But sometimes we want to ask ourselves, like, how do brands associate with us or how do we know what brand to pick? Like, let me give this example, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, Dr. Fashion. I don't think you're expecting what I'm about to say. If you, let's say you go to the grocery store, right, and you see... Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to pick up a product. Let's say bread, right? Your favorite bread, whether it's white bread, wheat bread, brown bread, oat bread, whatever it is. The bread that you pick, would you pick the brand that you're used to because of the brand that you know with the ingredients and everything? Or would you rather save money and get the same bread, same ingredients, same everything, but it has, let's say, the Publix brand on it because it's made from Publix, but it's it's literally like a I don't call it a decoy, but they've created their own version of it. Which one would you get? Um, I'm a smart shopper, so I would get the cheaper product. <laughs> Why? Well, based off what you just shared, it seems like it's just a dupe, and it's the brand name from the actual store versus the like branded well-known company name so if they have the same ingredients then what's the real difference besides the brand name right so why would i get the more expensive brand mm. would you buy an apple iphone without the logo on it 
I mean, if it's still an Apple iPhone, yeah. <laughs> what I need the logo for? I have a phone case on it. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get me? I'm, I'm, on, trying to, I'm trying to see something. <laughs> <laughs> too funny, too funny. No, I love it. I love it. No, this is, this is the kind of conversation we're talking about because I think it also keeps people aware of the brand. You know, Supreme t-shirt bag, you put a logo on it, boom, the price has gone up. It's a markup price. It's like, what? This is the same thing. Like you're spending $2.15 and I'm paying $2,000 for this because of a brand. So it's like you decide what you want to do with your brand. And I think the beauty of it all is, is how people show up online and what people do online with what they have, right? Like. I was in DC just over the week, the past week. If you see my Instagram, I put like probably 13 posts. I don't post much on my timeline. I used to post a lot. I also have 500 plus posts. But if you look at the the timestamps between 2021 and 2024, they're not as many. Like probably you could use, I would say they're probably not more than 50 at all, if even 30 to get at least, because I'm not posting much on my Instagram because when I post there, I'm, I'm making sure that even when I'm posting, you can see what I'm doing. And it's been hard for me because I do music, I do SEO, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm in business. You know, there are other things I could talk about. I could talk about Pinterest, but I also don't want to confuse my audience because they might be like, okay, we signed up or we followed you because of this and not that. So the way you're doing it also has to play into the role of nurturing them. Because if somebody found you for one thing and they realize you do more than one thing, then they're like, okay, let's see what else you do. And then eventually you create this affinity. So when it comes to branding, right, it's the functionality, like Dr. Fashion was saying, like if the Apple phone is working and I don't got to use the logo, it's cool. I'm going to use it because it's right there. The functionality has not changed. Right. But at the same time, I think the branding piece also has this sense of belonging because people want to feel like they belong to a community. They belong to some type of, you know, affiliate that makes them one with the product. You know, if I don't have this product, then I'm not part of the community, that kind of thing. So do you think people care these days as they used to? Yeah, I, I think it just depends on what it is. Um, like the first thing you mentioned was food. I don't think that's such a big issue, but I think if it comes down to like things that people can physically see that you're wearing, such as Nikes versus like, um, like the retro Jordans or something, people look at that a lot different than bread, right? And then one thing you mentioned was like the sense of community. So even with my company, Creator Life, um, you know, we have branded our company really well and people are able to identify that even without me always creating content. So that goes down to like the logo, the brand messaging, our mission statement, all that information that is available for people. So it's a lot of things to think about when you are talking about branding. Yeah. And even the brands that you associate your brand with matters, like you're with Facebook, YouTube, like those are brands and businesses that are important to your business. Because if it wasn't for those brands, your community wouldn't be where it is, not because they owe you anything, but because you spend time and invested in people that live in communities or spend time in those communities that matter to you. Big time. I know it's a morning. I'm like, why is he making me talk so much this morning? <laughs> so I'm going to keep it cool. But thank you for that feedback too, because you have to, you have to, you have to think about branding. You know, your branding has to make sense. Like even on Clubhouse, if somebody has a brand and they show up in this room, that brand is, it's going to stand out. You're going to feel like, oh, somebody walked in the room. Like, cause it's a brand, right? You feel different. Like something just changes just because maybe you've had an experience with them or something happened or you felt good about it or you've heard about it. You know, it feels good. Like the iPhone 16, I'm getting that. I don't know about you, but I'm getting that. And I'm not just getting it because I want to have the phone. It's because I know what I've used my iPhone 14 Pro Max for. 
and 14 and I skipped the 15 on purpose because I wanted to just wait. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm good on devices. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I got to get the next thing. It's because of the technology. Because after the 16, whatever comes next with the 17 is going to be way, way more advanced than the 16. Of course, because every year is different. But if you start early and start using those tools now, then whatever they're going to release later is something you can adapt to, right? When you think about music videos, I'm thinking about shots. I'm thinking about content. Like I use my camera for a lot of things, you know? And if you look at the way I position my camera, like if you look at my Instagram, I just posted something today just before getting on here that, you know, the convention I went for in DC. If you look at some of the videos and you see how they're layered, you can tell that the way I was positioning the angles was not just, oh, hit record. Like I'm looking at something, I'm looking at a frame. So as a brand, your frame has to, your frame has to frame. Let me put it like that. Hey, Julie, welcome. Good morning. You know, your frame has to make sense. It has to bring impact. People have to know what you're doing because that brand that you say or that you are or who you represent is going to change, right? And that's how people are going to connect with you. Sometimes we think the branding also is, is what it is, but it's really not. Case in point, McDonald's, yes, they sell food. Yes, they have burgers. Yes, they have big bags, Big Macs, and all that great stuff, right? Da, 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 da. You know exactly what's going to happen, right? You want a Happy Meal. <laughs> you know exactly what's happening, right? But if you look at their bottom line business-wise, yes, they're making buku bread from that, but majorly it's from franchising. It's from real estate. It's from building businesses, assets, property. You know, that is what is really pushing them. Yeah, other brands are doing the same thing too. They're also food chain restaurants, but the way McDonald's is doing it is different. They have a different business model. So consumers consume food. And then on the business side, it's kind of like B2B, B2C. You know, B2B, they're able to do the franchising, do the, all that great stuff, get into those positions. Yeah, Chick-fil-A does that. Other brands do that, right? But how McDonald's is doing it is different. And you can also see in the impact on what they do. Yeah, everyone talks about McDonald's and this and that, but it is what it is. So those are some things that you look at as a brand and ask yourself, what is McDonald's advertising? You know, they're advertising something, but at the same time, they're building something too. So when you look at those brands, success leaves clues. What are you building and what are you also advertising as well? Hey, Julie, good morning. Good morning, Favor. How are you? I'm great. Let people know who you are and we'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. Okay, so I was sharing the room while you were talking. Branding versus marketing. I think it all starts with your brand. What do you want people to remember you by? Uh, let me ask Maybe Dr. Fashion, she would like to answer. Once you know how you want to be remembered, you can build your brand up from there. And marketing, once you have that solid foundation of your brand, that's when you just unleash the marketing. There's so many ways to market yourself. You have to be very clear on your audience and understand do you want to do a niche marketing? Do you want to do a big overall marketing? Do you you know, so that's where it takes like some really th real thinking, but it does all start with your brand. What do people, why don't I ask favor? What do you want people to remind, to remember you by? I want people to remember me for always showing up and giving information with value without gatekeeping it and doing it so freely that they feel like they actually stole from me. Ooh, I love that. You know, because I'm like, I'll give it to you and I'll help you because I just love to help people. That's just in my nature. I think my name favor just screams that, you know, but at the same time, I don't want it to be taken for granted either or over assume that this is what you get because it's on, it's available. You know, there has to be some boundaries to that, but definitely giving people that extended arm. They don't have to pay me for that. 
they can get it. That's why I started this podcast and I just pour, 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 pour. And whoever is able to listen, catch on those things and actually create a business from it, well and good. If they need to pay and, you know, work with us, then fine. We can do that too as a team and build. But essentially to leave that point in in in, in case that if somebody wants to connect with me or learn from me or learn about what I can do or if they need help with their business, I'm available online to show for them the way to that pathway they're looking for to success. So you are the secret weapon that everybody needs in their back pocket because you always show up. You're an advocate for everybody's brand. And I feel like being around you, I'm stealing the knowledge of a king, of a thought leader. And it, you transform people by just being around favor. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate you. You know, it's 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 the consistency in the showing up that I see. And, you know, I'm motivated, you know, like looking at you, Julie, Dr. Fashion, John, you know, y'all are doing so many great things. Like looking up to you guys too, I'm like, wow, you guys are making it, you know, killing it out there with millions of subscribers, millions of followers, millions of people listening. It's not easy to build it up and it takes tenacity. So just by showing up, it's like also giving myself a chance to show up for them and the people who need me too. So thank you all. What about John? What is what does he want to be remembered for? Good morning, John. His his bit loud mouth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I never gave that much thought. What do I want to be remembered for? Here's what I want to be remembered for: the guy who refused to die. How's that? So I can live that's right awesome. a long time. Oof, that's classic. Okay, all right. Dr. Think Fashion. about it. Yeah. What do, What do you want to be remembered for? Favor. Uh, the guy who gives away and helps everybody and, and dies very young or the guy who lives a long time? I don't know. Oh, I, living a long time. Like, I'm thinking generational. Like, you know how we know, like, Henry Ford and, you know, you know Isaac Newton and all these guys, Albert Einstein? Like, that's how I want it to be for me, you know, that people could actually go back in time and actually see stuff that we did and places that we, we actually created ground for so yeah i'm thinking long term i love that i want to be remembered for a snowball rolling uphill like every every time you're around me you're you become part of the snowball going forward building bigger things and meeting people that are amazing thanks for asking <laughs> i love that I love that. Okay. Wow. No, this this is good. I think the way because the way I'm hearing it from you, John, from Julie, it's like it's 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 very different. Like it's not you don't even expect to hear it. And I love the way it's put in it's in its imagery format because you can see there's so much that can play simultaneously. So wow, that's a good one, Julie. Thank you. Dr. Fashion, what about you? She's thinking. Oh, there she is. No, I'm working. Um, <laughs> I'm working in on the stage with you guys, but um, I heard part of the question is, what do you want to be known for? That and I remembered. That remembered for? Uh, definitely for being selfless and for the movement that I've created for my community. Um, I don't think it's just something I, I want to be known for or something I'm definitely going to be known for. I've been able to pour a lot into my community and change a lot of people's lives. So there's that. That's beautiful. And and it all falls back into, you know, this topic, you know, branding, marketing, advertising, sales. Because if you're impacting people, then 10 years from now, 100 years from now, they're still buying your books. They're still, you know, purchasing things into your estate. You know, you have a trust fund, you know, you're building assets, you're building property intellectually, proprietary, like giving people that chance to actually pay it back by you showing up for them. You know, those are some things you're doing. Like for me, for example, right now, my mom has books, you know, she's on Amazon too. And she has so many things. She's, she's global. She's out there. And I was like, huh, 
wait a minute, I need to do even my dad too. So my for my mom, I'm building her website so that people can just get her books right from her website because she's been having problems with Amazon and it's it's crazy. You know, it's cool, but it's like I thought about. It, I was like, wait, you need to also own your intellectual property. So she's gonna have her own podcast because she has so many sermons, so many things. Like it's literally loaded up years after years after years. So it's just content on content and pushing that. You know, to that space where she can also have her own stuff. My dad, I was coming to you, Dr. Fashion, because his he he sent me his email yesterday, yesterday said that the AdSense, the YouTube thing we've been trying to do, I think it got disabled. So I don't know what's going on. I think this is deactivated. So we have to check on that again. And I'm like, this is just stressful YouTube. <laughs> like, can't be this. It should be easy, you know. So I'll, I'll send it to you so you can see because I was planning to let you know on that. So I'm looking at all these things and I'm like, it's, I mean, there's so many things to cover. But at the same time, if you want that long-term success, it, it boils down to that positioning of what can people connect with you for? And it starts off with your knowledge panel online. It starts off with, you know, how you're showing up online. If you're on Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora, Google, YouTube, Pinterest, you're on these platforms, you're on publications, you're on platforms like even Wikipedia, and then you start running ads on the same name that you're advertising, you'd be paying less than the person who has no name out there that's trying to make a name for themselves by spending more in currency and in effort. So if you're organically showing up with the right brand, right from your file name, the images in your, if somebody types your name on Google, and the images that show up in Google Images, do those images have your keywords in those file names? Because when people download those images, they download them with an image file name attached. So if that file name is not created by you and it's not custom uploaded by you, then you're giving a chance to the algorithm to dictate what you are online which sometimes could be a huge miss. And that's why some companies, when when you look at like small businesses or you know businesses in these plazas, they show up, they, they do business, some close down, some stay there for years. You know, what keeps some of those businesses there for years is how they're positioned. And if you're not, if you're only on Google business profile only, that is a big miss. Because yeah, you know, I heard this yesterday, um, Shout out to Juliana. She said this, and she I heard this from someone too. She said, it's better to have 10% of a watermelon than 100% of a grape. So if you are creating something and you are building it, right, and that building is going to contribute to something long-term, then the effort that you're going to make to keep that building stay afloat and stay on, on ground, leveled, is like unharmed is when you are thinking about the brand behind the signboard, you know, the thing that allows someone to actually justify that, okay, yeah, this is something that I actually like to see, right? So as a brand, you are building your business by leveraging other brands. So how do you build a brand in 2024? I'm new. I don't have an audience. I don't have an experience. I don't have anything. What am I going to do? First things first, get a name. What is your name? You're either going to use your real name or use a pseudonym. Right. And then that name becomes a brand name that you're building for your business. The next thing you secure a domain, right? Secure a domain, meaning that this name is it available because you're name searching. When you also do, when you sign up as a business, when you're creating a business account, they're going to search the system to see if your business name matches somebody else's business name within the same next code. Right. So if it matches, then you have to choose another name because there can be two businesses in the same next code operating with the same business name. That's conflict, right? So when you start creating those names and securing your domains, securing your business names, then you're like, okay, what's a brand name? What do people know me for? And what are we talking about? Is it easy solutions? Is it simple ways? Is it productive? Is it sustainable? What is the power? What are the power words that you have? If you think about powerful words, astonishing, you know, affordable, like just look out and see what are the powerful words that you can add to your brand. Because if you think about Amazon, what are they known for? Speed. 
convenience, right? You, I, you can order something today, get it tonight or get it the next day. You don't have to wait for a week or three business days, right? So what are you known for? I was talking about this yesterday in SEO Sunday. I didn't even know about this. Richard Branson, a uh, great story on how he started his business, Virgin Atlantic. He was apparently, <laughs> this is the wildest story. I put, I shared it on my Instagram feed. Um, within the timeline, I put the little bubble on there. It was so, it, it was really cute, but at the same time, very like, very, very, I don't know. He's, he's, he's a go-getter because he was, he, he, let me just tell you the story. If you've never heard it before, if you've heard it, please let me know in the chat too. So Richard Branson was trying to get on a flight, which he got on and he was planning to meet a girl that same day. He said, this girl I'm talking to, I'm gonna meet her the same day and nothing's gonna stop me. So he took the flight and he was trying to get there and that flight couldn't board, it couldn't, it couldn't take off. That flight was like, I think they just closed down the flight. Something happened to the flight and it just didn't go in as planned. So he was like, I gotta get there today. Is there another way I can do this? So they said, there's no other way. So he's like, there has to be a way. And he ended up going to the desk office and asked if he could rent a plane <laughs> he's, and he got the plane. So on that plane, because everyone was going to that destination. So it's not like he was detouring from everybody else. Everybody was on the plane. We're all going to one destination and now we can all go. We're all stuck. So he rented the plane from that company and charged everybody that missed that flight, including himself, he charged the people 39 bucks to get on the flight. So 39 bucks per seat, he filled up the airplane and flew everybody to the destination and then he got to see the girl he was planning to see. And from there is when he was like, huh, Virgin Atlantic and he created his business and that's what we have today because he had a problem he didn't expect and he turned that into a solution that has built a solution for people around the world we know richard branson today for many things so that's just one example right like the stories are endless right but if you hear those kind of things you know you're like wow how did this happen so has anyone heard that story and if you have i would love to hear your thoughts if you haven't what are you thinking I was doing uh, multitasking, listening to audio. Were you talking to me, Faber? Yeah, I just opened up to anyone. You could go, John, anything that you're thinking about this, you know, just in general. Well, here's the main thing I think of it. Um, and I sent Julie uh, a message the other day. You know, I Probably about six months ago, actually over a year ago, I started really focusing on keywords and titles and for searchability uh, and SEO. Then I started really focusing on backlinks. And then I started focusing on backlinks on websites that have higher domain authority. Um, and, and the results have really paid off tremendously. It's a lot of work, but it's not it's not like rocket science. And, and Favor makes it, he breaks it down relatively easy. And a lot of it you can discover on your own. And then hopefully I'll get to a point where I'll hire someone like Favor to do it. But I just did a, a domain authority check on my website, LET Radio, the other day, uh, and it showed a domain authority of 31, um, where the, the big boys are like 90, 95. Uh, but now the next goal, and I feel for the first time that's achievable, that I can break 40 probably in another 30 to 45 days, um, just doing what I can do. Um, so I just say this, if you want to expand your presence um, and you ignore SEO, you're really missing uh, an opportunity. You are so right on that. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, it is so true. Because once you leverage that authority, especially with brands, and then you affiliate with other brands, it just builds and you don't have to do the legwork. You know, I've been hearing this, I think I've heard it twice in the last 48 hours. Do not reinvent the wheel. You know, like it's already there. So if you can build upon that and get 
beyond where you are by you know innovating things that could support what you're already doing it's it's long-term growth so that's that's really good john thank you so much for that insight you know as you were speaking it got me thinking about um a brand that i've started connecting with closely flowdesk and maybe julie i just thought about it now maybe i could talk to them about creative con yeah because I'm, I just, I'm going to, I got somebody on my podcast that works at Flowdesk. I've been trying to get this interview for, I think, the past five years. <laughs> I've been so determined. I'm like, you guys, I'm going to connect with one of you. And it's happening now. So they just connected me with somebody who's going to be interviewed on the podcast, on the We Don't Play podcast, which to talk about Flowdesk because they emailed me last week saying that they want me to write an article and they're going to pay for that as well. And just to talk about Flowdesk and how we've been using it, the features, what's coming, because I'm also in the beta program. So now that I'm creating those close connections with the team, I would love to even highlight that because email marketing is communication, it's writing, it's overhead, it's cost, it's elements, it's checkouts, it's branding, it's everything. And the way I've been using Flowdesk is so beautiful because I'm, a I'm able to segment my audience within the audiences that are already segmented. So it's like a double layer. And now they have something called spin the wheel. It's they have so many great things that are happening that you can actually gamify your brand and people can actually enjoy it instead of them just getting regular emails daily. So that's what I thought about Julie. So I don't know if you're you're open for that. Julie's busy, but let me know. Oh, sorry. I was just feeding the dogs. I was listening. Can you repeat the question? Oh, about Taylor? Creative Con and Flowdesk. Flowdesk, Flo that's amazing. Like, I would love any kind of conversation or guidance from you because email marketing is so imperative to building your brand and marketing. Yeah, definitely. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll put that through this week and, and see what they say. Cause if they're open to those kind of partnerships and events, cause I don't see them out. They're not really big out there. They're really playing it safe in a way from what I see in their marketing compared to like MailChimp, you know, active campaign, constant contact, you know, those guys have been there for years and the way they're coming is like, it's like so different. And because they're really great core, why I love them so much is that they've partnered up with Amazon SES, which is, you know, an operating system from Amazon allowing, allowing you to get high email deliverability and you get it directly into your inbox. So all those guessworks are, is it in the spam? Is it in the updates folder? They're all gone because now you have high click rates, high open rates, and you can actually build your brand and build workflows and everything and it's very simple it's not complex like they make it so simple that anybody can design an email to the point where they even give you templates for those things and you can easily connect your brand your socials and even if you have shopify for example shop right directly in there like it has so many things so if you have a book you know how do you build those things there's so many layers to it and i know that if it can just be plugged in in a way yeah, definitely we'll get that on. You know, it's it's about this branding and marketing we see here. So I think the major thing too for businesses to to think about is if they're positioning their brands online and they're using SEO correctly, which means they are posting and creating content that is repurposing them to a position that somebody can find that one sentence you said on LinkedIn, that one quote you said on Instagram, and that leads to a direct message on the platform or somebody messaging you directly to or privately to get some more information. That is when you start to see the attention and the retention span, because the sales is not just from today. It's from, you know, your past sales, who has purchased from you this year. Can you go back to them? Can you find out how they're doing? Even if they're not working with you, the people who are purchasing from you now, what's happening, the people who are gonna purchase from you, in the, you know, later, what's gonna happen? So those sales goes into the advertising because for them to make that sale or for them to purchase that product or service, you have to advertise that message by marketing because your brand stands for something. So when you look at the whole picture, 
like if you look at it from like a tractor standpoint like you know if you want to drive this tractor all the way down you got to drive it and you got to put stuff on it right so if i'm going to market and and complete this and have this huge farm where i'm able to get all these things and pick all these fruits and all these vegetables and have all these things and then sell them before i even get to the selling the branding means that for me to even achieve that sale i need to have good equipment right what is that good equipment with your branding what is your your tech stack like what is your marketing stack like how do you process invoices how do you process contracts how do you do these things because it's not easy to you know consistently 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 create content yeah it can get really burnt out but if you can position it in a way that you're answering questions and these questions are directly responding back to the algorithm there's no way you can't win like if if i know people are searching for what is seo and i'm typing that into my website and then i'm giving people back information with case studies and examples then supporting things that they're looking for will help me justify what i said initially about seo because right now a lot of people are thinking about email marketing they want to do email marketing better because that's where you get to see it i've seen email marketing to the point where like you send an email the sales just fall right in whether it's an invoice email a proposal email or an rpf you know request for proposal if it's a you know a pitch a psa a reminder a kickback you know a bump up whatever it is whatever you want to call it those emails have value and if your website is also on on, on great soil it's also a great place for you to, to to soar because sometimes i think about it like this right and maybe i've never talked about it in this to this capacity but when you have a, a domain and you buy that domain the hosting platform that you have that domain on is also going to determine how well you scale right because when you look at businesses online most of the businesses that you have online are built from wordpress from wix from shopify right and there are others as well right those are, i would say those are the top three if i look at the market like outright wordpress wix shopify there are others like duda like tilda like there's so many others that are really good they're ai gamma they are really good ones out there but those three i mentioned are the ones that really you know hit the market well whether you have products or services and then if you have a hosting from those services how do you build it? Yeah, Squarespace is there, but it's, I wouldn't hit it as heavily as those three, but they have their own specialty, which is domains, because they purchased it from, they acquired it from Google domains. So it's Squarespace domains. So if you have a brand and your brand has a domain and that domain is hosted on a server, that server has to be strong enough to contain the amount of traffic you're gonna put it. Think about it. If the if the rain is falling down, and you have a bucket, and that bucket is filled filled up, that's to, to its brim. That's that's the capacity. That's the point at which that <laughs> bucket can contain water. The rest of the water that's coming around it is just overflow. It's just pouring out, right? So why I'm giving that example is your hosting platform could give you a capacity right because that capacity could say okay because you're on this server yes you're having content but you're not getting this amount of traffic because potentially you don't have enough bandwidth to receive that information that's why when you have podcasts and all this great stuff with rss feeds you're able to get those massive amount of millions of followers and subscribers and streams because on apple.com on spotify.com on youtube.com their servers are huge I hope that makes sense. Like when you see the capacity that you're building on, hey, Carrie, then you can build into those capacities with your content and then leverage from those capacities on your website. Then from there, you can start creating the consistency and building that retention, showing, hey, sh we see you on YouTube, we see you on LinkedIn, because you have videos there, you're getting millions of followers. The reason why, or millions of streams or downloads or views, because those YouTube servers can, they have the capacity to contain those things. Your website might not, because you don't have that capacity, but you can leverage that capacity on your website 
sending them to a blog. That's why when you have a blog there and you attach a YouTube video to your blog, the capacity of you increasing in traffic is high because now when somebody's playing that YouTube video on your web page, you're getting the first party data, you're getting the credit, but their YouTube is also getting the server retention because it's showing up on your website, which is also showing up on your YouTube channel as a view count. So if you're leveraging media and you're leveraging brands and you're leveraging domains and you're leveraging content, then you can really decide on what platform you're on and see where it goes. Even government sites are built on WordPress. Like when you think about why they're on WordPress, look at the hosting platform, right? And see that those hosting platforms have servers that allow you to have those bandwidths. So when you're scaling as a business, yes, yeah, start on Wix, start on Squarespace, start on WordPress, start wherever, right? Start with Google if you want or GoDaddy, but don't stay there. Just like when you say when you buy your first house, that's not the last house you're going to live in or the last house you're going to buy, right? So start somewhere, but as you're scaling, keep in mind that there are servers that you could be on that could really leverage that authority long term as well. Kerry, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining. Good morning. Good morning, Favor. Happy Monday, everyone. Just here for the information and inspiration. Um, yeah, what are you guys talking about? We're just talking about branding, marketing, advertising, and sales. And Julie had a really great question earlier in the room, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. The question was, based on all that you're doing, what would you want to be remembered for? What do you want to be known for? I would say impact in my community for helping others. And I think truly that's what we're here for, to help other people and to have a real sense of purpose. And I figured that out. I've, I've done a lot of things. Um, and a lot of the things that I've done, I have done, haven't been fulfilling. It was more like, oh, can I be the best at something and that that kind of stuff doesn't work af after time. <laughs> no, I love that. Thank you for that inside impact. I think we're going to be known for yeah. high I don't know. That's you said high my, kicks? My, yeah, high, like Carrie does high kicks apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, hmm. so not. <laughs> I did it once in the lobby and apparently um, I'm tied to this. Well, it's so. the things you don't want to be known for. Sometimes you become known for, and but you can use that to your advantage. It's about standing out too. I think that's powerful. Ooh, Favor was Carrie, there in the show in the lobby. <laughs> it was a movie. Favor, <laughs> I'm so jealous. But don't you remember her high kicks? I mean, that's like the beauty of it. When you said it, I was like, oh, it hit me. <laughs> because Carrie, Carrie's, I, I would say, like, I would say high kicks and also sharpshooter. Yeah. I'm a lot of things. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she's dated the whole <laughs> NFL. Uh, one, one Patriots player again. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that speaks to you, like, knowing your audience and, that also speaks to your creativity and just being able to be you. And sometimes it's so fun. Isn't it fun just like to be yourself and not always be on? <laughs> sometimes, and I, literally her sense of humor is so awesome too. Yeah, Carrie's amazing. Yeah, we should definitely, I'll, yeah, that would be something I'd love to see like in character and motion. Oh, yes. Like even, Sorry, I was I was just like smiling because you. I love it, <laughs> Carrie. What are you thinking? Well, you know, I, when I first started, before Shot at Love, I did this live keynote with a daughter in high school called the Swiping Soiree, and I called it my Tinder tour, my Tinder musical, and it was so hilarious. And people came and bought tickets. And it was like, <laughs> I, I mean, I entered the room with a cowbell. Um, I, I just 
put, I just put it out there and I just knew I had to do half entertainment and, you know, with the education. And once I did that, I never really looked back. I mean, it, it was one of those things. It was so crazy. Could it work? And it worked. And so you can't be afraid to, if you think it's funny, if you think it's going to work, if you think it's people are going to come and buy tickets, you never know. And that was a big thing to do. I mean, I remember my daughter was on the floor, like hiding behind my frame center, watching this whole production. Like, oh, I can't believe my mom's doing this. But she lived with me and knew what I was about. Um, I think you get to a point in your life when, when you're like, if not now, when? Like, when am I going to just be me? And that's okay. And if they, and I was willing to fall down publicly. Um, and at least I tried. And I think you have to have a, I think you have to, get to that point. hundred percent. I believe in authenticity and, and power and the truth of your own inner self, you know, what you can do. Cause sometimes we don't even believe what we can achieve until somebody else does. And it's like, yeah, I could have done that too, but you didn't, but you could, if you still try, but that tenacity to keep going is another thing. Like Julie was saying earlier too, like with the snowball, you know, uphill, it's like, okay, if it's going downhill, it's easier because it can just rotate faster. But when it's going uphill, you really need to know what rocks to step over. You need to know what, you know, fakes to jump through. So it's like you're creating this atmosphere that is almost like a scenery that you're creating because of the passion that you have within you to show up for people that you care about. And that also goes in line with, you know, how you say things, what you say, and where you're connecting because people can get information from you they can hey oh this is a great tool okay i don't need to work with them thank you <laughs> and people just disappear and you're like oh wow okay so you really see people's character in your authenticity because when you really want to show up for them you really know who's also showing up for you so it's that law of reciprocity you know you can give 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 but if nobody ever gives back at some point you'll get something immeasurable that you didn't even plan for because you gave authentically and you gave cheerfully so it's also biblical too you have to give cheerfully don't give with the with like trying to give somebody a gift and then your other hand has a fist you know it it doesn't make any sense because that's retrogressive and that's not helpful to either party. So it's just a way of thinking, you know, how do you build into your business? How do you build into your brand? And sometimes you may not even know what it is, right? For me, it, it's We Don't Play. That's the name of the podcast. That's the name of the merch. That's the name of, you know, that's that's the mantra. And it came to me because I was like, we includes you and me. It doesn't include my, me, myself, and I, because by myself, I can't do much, you know, but by a community, it grows. And I think I was doing something on um, Instagram. I've never talked about it here, but on Instagram, I think they were asking, what is your favorite animal? And a lot of people didn't know this. So I had to also kind of give them some more insights, but my favorite animal is a wolf. And it's because you don't see wolves around and, and just because of the way they roll in packs, right? As a family, they care for each other. You will never see a wolf stranded. They're very smart. They're very protective of, you know, their own. And whether it comes to intellectual property or their, you know, the spaces they're in or where they tread upon, you know, they're very careful and they're very thoughtful too. And they're very nice. Some people think wolves are the worst thing, but it's it's not. When you see a white wolf, you know, on Game of Thrones, for example, you're like, ooh, okay. You know, like it has a thing on you, you know, it's it's different. But you can also see like what that means when it comes to loyalty because they're also very loyal, like very loyal animals. So I look at that and I'm like, huh, we. So it, it came as, that's where it came into because it's work and play. It's, it's a time for everything. If you don't work, you don't eat, you know? So you have to make sure that you're balancing on a diet that can attribute to the 24 hours in your day. So those are some things I, you know, think about too. Does anyone have an animal or a mantra? If anything, I would love to hear that Dr. Fashion, Julie, John, Carrie. 
What do you mean a mantra? Like you, what you like, what are the words you stand for? What are the things that if someone hears your brand, they can remember that those are the words that you normally say internally or externally or through an animal. Through an animal, I have an animal. Ooh. Yeah, you do. I'm a caged cheetah. Why caged? <laughs> You're a got GD cheetah. Well, because I, well, I didn't start that one. Glennon Doyle, who does hard things, did. But we can do um, hard things, Carrie. We can together. We can, Julie Logan. Um, well, for me, I can do it. I know I can do it. And a lot of people who's who have worked for me know that I can do, if given the opportunity, if and when given the opportunity, I can. I have the the strength and the will and the desire to get it done. But the problem is half the time someone doesn't know about me or in, in my world, in the photography world, it's super competitive and, um, you know, it, and I'm not making excuses. It's just sometimes a better person for the job doesn't get the job. So um, I've had some missed opportunities and, and, but I keep trying to kick that door down and so that's why I feel like once I'm ready to run and that 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 door is open, I'm going to go so fast you won't even <laughs> I'll be gone <laughs> because I've been wait, I've been building, 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 building for a long time in lots of areas of my life. So that's why I resonate with that. Ooh, I love that. Now it makes sense. Huh? You see? This is the whole point of animals, it's not just picking an animal, it's like, what is the core? What is like the main thing? And just looking at that cheetah run and they move fast, <laughs> like you can't catch it. Like catch me if you can, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, I would love to hear from you too, John. What What's the animal if you have one? Well, I don't know. I, I've always had a fascination with wolves, uh, like you said. Um, I'm a big dog person and it's kind of hard not to like dogs, it, it, not to like wolves if you like dogs. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of lessons we learn, but if, uh, you know, I don't know anymore that there is, uh, an animal that I would relate to, um, on my, as far as what I do, my radio show goes, if I was the, the venture guest, I would have to say it's probably going to be, uh, a wolf, but it's also going to be, uh, at this stage of the game, you know what? We're more, all the animals, most of them are, are pack animals. That's the ones I, re, I resemble and I, and I associate with most. The concept of a lone wolf usually is one that does not survive, that does not do well, uh, because they need the pack to, for, for their resilience, and I need as well. And the other one that I really relate to a lot is a silverback gorilla, uh, partly because of my build, but partly because um, they're also a pack animal. Uh, and they're one that's not understood uh, as much as people realize. Um, they view them more as a threat than the reality of what they pose. And they don't pose much of a threat at all. Uh, but they are imposing. So um, I don't know the answer to that favor. That's one got me kind of stumped. Ooh. I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this because we don't really talk about like brand archetypes and and you know what we stand for what we show up for like you know the core values the corporate values so it, it boils down to these things and when you're building a business and it's like you create it without even realizing it and because you just love what you naturally do it falls right in line with those things because i love dogs too you know and the wolves just made so much sense but you can't be a lone wolf either you know you got to be in that pack and if you're a lone wolf then it means that something happened you know so you know you it's like a whole story in itself so it's really good that you know i didn't even know that john so that's really good thanks for saying that julie says bulldog huh john is a bulldog <laughs> oh yeah. why why would you say that um well i have two bulldogs french bulldogs and he reminds me of my dogs and he's very protective over what is right. He is very protective over his territory. However, when you get inside and you tickle them on their bellies, they, he's funny, he's lovable, and 
he's entertaining. So that's why I say bulldog. Hmm. I love that. John, do you approve? Yeah, without two thumbs up. I, I give up more if I had more. I don't have more than two. <laughs> I love that. No, I love that 100 percent That that's true. I I can see that. Now when you Julie says it, I can actually picture that. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it really resonates too with, you know, the the attraction that you're trying to get, you know, from the people you're trying to connect with. And it also boils down to, you know, where you're advertising, you know, really, it, it just plays into big roles, really big roles. And how do you advertise? How do you market? How do you brand yourself? And where are you putting yourself out there so that people can find you accessible? And it's not just access that they're looking for. They're looking for results, you know, because you can be a brand I can recognize, but I'll never connected your brand because it didn't connect with me. I'm very aware of your brand, but your brand is not aware of me, the person, because I'm not the, the consumer for that brand. So when you start looking at the way your brand shows up for people, then the way you show up connects with how they respond, right? And when people see you actively working, actively doing things, they don't even know what you're doing, but they know you're working hard. Then the moment you decide to say something, they're like, okay, now we see the the connection between what you've been doing all along because you build as you grow, right? And as you're going to different places, as you're building to different spaces, you're going to start having to kind of prove yourself again in a way, because if you show up on YouTube and you've never talked about a, a thing, they'll be like, who is this person talking about this? <laughs> because we've never seen this video on the web but you're now staying there consistently. They're like, oh, wow, he's been here all along. She's been here all along, but they didn't recognize that because they were not familiar to your experience. Just like on here on Clubhouse, you can go on LinkedIn, you can say something. Someone might not really understand what you're saying because they've not resonated with you that way. It's just text. It's just, it's basic text. It's just HTML. But then when you add that text and include your colors, your fonts, your styles, how you say things, experiences, emojis, it starts to play a big role into your total brand layout. And then when you start to advertise, it gets easier. Because if I advertise something that I'm familiar with, it's going to make sense. For example, Super Bowl, everyone's talking about Kendrick Lamar, you know, halftime show in New Orleans, where it's supposed to be Lil Wayne. And I'm a fan of both of them. These are great artists, right? And it's a whole debate of why why did this happen? Why did this not happen? It's a whole thing going on, right? But at the same time, you look at the threshold, you look at the brand, you look at the marketing, you look at the advertising, they're thinking about the tickets. <laughs> they're thinking about the number of views, right? This is history in the making. You know, he's never, there's never been a rapper to headline a Super Bowl halftime show ever, right? And it's happening with one person. And it's happening for the second time because he did it the last time, you know, with the group. So when you look at entertainment, you look at showbiz, you look at businesses, you look at how people are working and you're wondering why this, why that, it goes back to branding, right? Who do you associate with, right? Look at Messi and Ronaldo, right? Great footballers, great people. We all know them. Ronaldo has a billion followers across all platforms. That is technically... <laughs> Like, I don't even know where to start. That That is just immense, right? And he's doing it and he's continuing to do what he's doing, right? Because of his brand. He's associated with different brands. He's made his own brands. He's made his own things, right? He's marketing. He's playing soccer. He's he's having a good time. He's taking care of his family. He's he's showing up for community. He's showing up for his team. Like, it's, it's a real thing, right? I'm a Manchester City fan, right? So I can see... And I look at how teams, how they prepare, what's the mindset like? So even as a brand, don't just think, okay, yeah, we have, we're brands, but I also think about like, what do I look out for, right? Some, someone can be another fan, you know, football season is on, you know, people have their own fans, right? And they have their own teams, they have their own games, they have their own things. So when you look at those things, those are affinities. Because if I'm wearing a jersey that you support and you like that team because we don't even know each other, but because of this team, we can now actually have a conversation. It breaks the ice. So what ice are you breaking with the marketing that you're consistently coming up with, 
that has a message that represents your brand. And if your brand is consistently showing up for the right thing, then you can start affiliating yourself with those connections, right? And that's where you start to see things grow. And that's how you get to know, okay, are we working? Are we building? Are we just making content for content's sake? Or are we actually building it because we want to, right? For me, for work in play entertainment, which is a company that I've built, just this year, this is the first time in a decade, because it's 11 years this September, and first time ever, we were able to partner with a nonprofit organization called Zoo Labs. Go to zoolabs.org. And they create courses and they build community. They have a community where they train, teach, and help, and even give grants to musicians, you know, entrepreneurs that want to really grow their musical brand. So I got that connection and partnered up with them, did a whole course on SEO for artists and entrepreneurs, because I'm also an artist to a musical artist. So I know the entertainment business, you know, having a graduate program in that too, you know, from Full Sail University in Winter Park, Florida, in Orlando, and just connecting and knowing and telling people, hey, this is what the market's looking like, because I've done entertainment law. So I know what it looks like out there. I've read those Lexus Nexus um <laughs> All those things just to see, okay, how do these things add up? You know, when you're doing business, what does the branding entail? If your brand is on the line, what's going to happen? What's the bottom line? You know, when you're marketing, how are you marketing? What's your mix looking like? You know, when you're advertising, what are you advertising with color? If there's color, if you know that this, this city is always sunny, then have something that you can actually have on the board that's not color blinding you, right? Have bright colors because when people are seeing those colors when they're driving on the billboard, they're not going to look at the background. They're going to look at the foreground, right? That background is going to determine the foreground. In other words, what you write and what you say is going to be determined on how long they look at that picture on that screen. So if that screen is looking nice, it's white space, it's, you know, you can see the colors, it's bold, you can see a picture, you can take it, there's a QR code, or there's something that can associate with it, then it also shows how simplicity is big on your brand. Look at Apple. When Apple runs ads, the simplicity of their ads are so simple that it's like they could have done more, but they didn't, right? The white space. You know the third you know a third of the the picture like you think about the rule of thirds that they're creating it's so important to look at those things and ask yourself how am i also connecting with those brands and what am i using with those brands for if you're selling products do your products sell better with people who use macs windows or apple samsung do you know what ios they're on do you know like do you know those things that's where advertising comes to play. I'll give you a tool. Huh, I don't know if I should say this. No, I'll I'll keep it. But if you if you use analytics correctly, right? And you're using analytics to understand the consumer behavior of your business, then the more you're able to understand what they like, the more you're able to show up for them. For example, if you have a podcast and your podcast, you know that a lot of people use Apple Podcasts. Automatically, you know that people use iPhones, right? If they use iPhones, you want to know what type of iPhones, right? If you know what type of iPhones, then you're going to know what type of iPhone versions iOS is there on, right? Some people are on iOS 18 right now. Like I'm on iOS 18. Some people are still on iOS 17. Some people are going to wait till the iPhone drops to get everything. So everyone is in their own space. I'm, I'm a beta tester. So I would be seeing breaking things down and everything and building them up. So when you're advertising and you're showing up for people online and you're spending money on ads and they say, okay, where do you want to spend money on ads? I, iPhone, tablet, mobile web, and you click all of them, you're spending money in the wrong places. Because if you know that they all use iPhones, then put all your money in that bad bucket. So when you're now getting your return on your ad spend, it's not unfiltered. It's filtered, right? Like Pinterest, for example, when you run ads on Pinterest, they give you two types of impressions, right? There are earned impressions and they're just the regular impressions, right? You can also have gross impressions too. 
and it will show you, okay, here's your gross impressions, here's your reach, here are your earned impressions. And earned impressions means that somebody saved your pin, somebody saved your content, somebody saved what you're connecting with. And I was even mentioning last month that I know Apple, when it's Apple time, Apple season for the, the new iPhones to drop <clears throat> and the new Apple to drop, excuse me, I knew that they're going to go heavy on Pinterest. So if you go on Pinterest, you're going to see an Apple ad somewhere. Of course, it's on other social media platforms, but on Pinterest, it's heavy. Because why I love Pinterest is because when you get an ad on Pinterest, this is the one thing, let me say it this way. This is the one thing that distinguishes Pinterest ads from any other ads on any other platform. And this is the main factor. I've been doing this for a while. So I think this is just the singular formula that separates these two. This is it. When you run ads on Pinterest, all eyes are on you. In other words, if somebody sees your pin on Pinterest and they're scrolling down, you're the only person, you're the only advertiser that is actually being seen on that, on your whole screen. So if you look at your screen from top down, right? And you see ads, like if you go on YouTube, you'll see different ads. Facebook, you keep swiping, you see ads, right? As you go, Pinterest, when you're scrolling, they're the only platform that when you see an ad, right? It's right there in the middle. It's especially if it's a video that's like a one by one video aspect ratio, it's right there in the middle. And that's the only thing you're seeing. And if you, that's the only, that's what Apple did when they were advertising the event before, because they had an ad that was advertising people to, you know, RSVP for the event so they could watch it on YouTube live. So they did that and it was six seconds. And I was like, why did they do six seconds? Because if you look at the percentage of video watched, whenever, especially when you're running ads, generally there's 25% watched, 50% watched, 75% watched, and 100% watched. So the longer your video, the longer you're stretching your percentages. The shorter the video, the more accurate, the more concise, the more frames you're able to put within a calculated formula that keeps you within a time conscious space, right? So if it's six seconds and they get 75% watch or 25% watch or even 50% watch, that's enough for them to keep that rotation going, right? And yeah, we may say because it's Apple, but imagine if your brand does the same thing with six seconds and it makes sense, right? Why it will make sense is because if you can understand and tell someone in six seconds what you're trying to tell them, then they will go ahead and click on it and proceed. And with Pinterest, you get earned impressions. No other platform gives you earned impressions because those earned impressions come after the ad stops. So if after the ad is run, the budget has been exhausted, you've done everything you could, you've gotten your, you know, your return on investment, your return on ad spend, you still get earned impressions. And that's because someone somewhere saved your pin and they're still viewing your pin as an impression, which counts to the bottom line of the sale. So you could be promoting something all year. And then when it's Christmas time or when it's, you know, Black Friday, now they're ready to purchase because they've been seeing you all year right? You just, just show up on Black Friday. Hey, check me out. You've been there organically and also with a paid, you know, media space in mind too. So when you're using all these platforms, ask yourself, where do I want to show up the most? And where can I spend the most time impacting, but also spending the less, the least time doing it over and over again? Because if I do it over and over again on a platform, it means that I have to regurgitate myself or keep saying the same thing over. But if I can say this in one video on YouTube, in one podcast, then I can always come back to that episode and come back to give more information about what I said initially. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's not just a win for me, it's a win for you. And then the sales come right in, right? You have to think about front end sales. That's something that... I'll be talking about soon front end sales, because if somebody is going to, let's say very good example, concert tickets, those are front end sales, right? Or front end, I would say marketing, because you are purchasing tickets, flights are front end sales, because you're purchasing things in advance, 
right, for things that you're going to plan for, right? So if you're purchasing tickets to this concert, you're choosing this seat because you're going to pay that price for that experience, right? So it's a front end sale. You've not experienced the sale, but you've purchased the sale expecting the experience, right? So when you're expecting the experience, that experience is going to be justified by how much you paid and the brand that you invested in, right? So if there was an expectation of the brand and it surpassed your expectation, then what you've been paid for will not even be a thought because you've actually gained. Case in point, Disney, when you pay that day pass, you're not even thinking about the money you paid at the gate. You're thinking about all the photos, all the merch, all the, the roller coaster rides. Like you forget about the price because you're getting more than what you paid for. Right. So if you're thinking as a business, what can I give people as a front end offer that they could actually enjoy before they, they even experience it is where you start to really think about building that tenacity as a business and then including those marketing tactics as well. So those are some things that you like to to add on. Julie, John or Kerry, have you thought about, you know, front end sales or front end marketing before? And if you have, how are you doing it? Yeah, I was thinking about it. So when I used to shoot weddings, um, like within a week or a few days, I would do a sneak peek of some of the really strong images because now that the wedding's over, everyone's talking. Oh, I can't wait to see. Where did Carrie go? Whoa, is it just me? Well, when did Carrie go? That that is so weird. I hope she comes back. I, just, I think she swiped herself out. She does that periodically, but she'll come back. Oh man! And she was about to say something really good. Okay, she'll be she back. She always <laughs> leaves at the best possibly the with cliffhanger, and the secret to success is boom, she's gone. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give her this. <laughs> this was definitely a moment. I, yeah, that she definitely did that. I, I, hopefully, she'll be back. <laughs> but that was classic. Yeah, I think it's there's a secret in the sauce, like you said. You know, there's a way things happen, and if you have a business, it's I don't know. It's a whole like this right now that just happened is an experience. I think we all felt it. <laughs> so it's how you can also connect with your audience. Like, what is the aha moment? I'll pass it to you, Joe. What are you thinking about this whole front end sales and marketing piece? Well, the thing for me is I don't do front end sales. Um, so uh, what my whole focus is, is increasing discoverability of my content to get more consumers, my content. And that's not just the podcast. It's also social media, all those other ones, because that generates revenue. And in there, there's revenue sources. There's also advertiser sponsors. I'm working on an ad for an advertiser right now um, that they sell. Um, my job is to get as many listeners as possible. So I don't sell anything. Um, and I think that's a, a puts me in conflict. And I know Carrie doesn't with her. She's a world-class photographer, but she doesn't sell it. Um, I don't think Julie really with her show sells. Uh, but she, I can't speak for her, but she is really tops at her field. Um, so I'm, I'm really focused on getting more consumers uh, and not trying to sell them anything, if that answers your question. Hmm, that's a great response. Now I'm thinking, would sponsorships be part of a front end sale? Well, for me, I'll just tell you what sponsors are looking for. Uh, sponsors and advertisers are looking for reach. They're looking for as many consumers as possible, or it, it's a small end group that's hard to get in front of. Um, so it's one or the other. For me, it's it's large. As, so the only time I enter into front end sales is when they contact me, which they do quite often. I don't reach out to too many people uh, because I don't have, I don't appreciate that being done to me. Um, if they want sales, then then we talk sales. Um, but the one thing that, and this is a, a word of caution I give to a lot of people, the, the mindset with a lot of people nowadays, and so you get with the big companies, the mindset of a lot of people is I need to get a direct response. I need to get a certain amount of sales to advertise. And I tell them very sharply, 
Um, not necessarily in a mean way, but very, uh, look, my job is not to sell you or your product. My job is to get you in front of listeners. If I get you in front of a million listeners and hand you the megaphone, it's on you to convert them to sales. It is not on me. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. I love that. Carrie, back to you. You left a cliffhanger. That was like a perfect timing jump off. <laughs> I know I got that. I, I got bounced out of the room. I don't know what you heard and what you didn't hear. Um, I like what John just said though. That's pretty good. Um, because that's a good way of saying you better come up with a compelling ad or, um, you know, you can, he's opening a door. That's what he's doing really. Uh, but he can't really necessarily control what happens with the advertising per se. Um, yeah, that was, that was an interesting way. It was an interesting pitch. I'll just say that. I love that though. It's, it also has a, a different way of you protecting your property, your assets, your mission. And if it's reached, like John is saying, that is the goal, then it's great. It's like, I can put you on the Times Square billboard, but it's not my, it's not going to be me to decide whether I'm going to purchase what I see on the billboard that kind of thing too. So when your brand speaks for itself and you've already done the legwork, the groundwork, and people ha can recognize, respect the brand too, because of the brands you represent with, or you partner with, then it makes it easier. That's why brands partner together. That's why when you think about brands, even cars, they do this so well. Toyota, Lexus, same thing. It's just a different way of manufacturing but same, same parent company, right? So, but you're going to purchase either or because of your convenience or because of the price point or because of luxury or because of whatever, it, you know, it could be. So you're still getting a sale, but that way it would advertise to you was different because the marketing message had a different formula from the brand that you were connecting with. So it, it has a completely different way of making you think, oh, this brand partnered with this brand. So that means they stand for this. So it also gives you that way of like being very concise with your messaging and also gives you that formula to discover, you know, what can we do here? Even brands do that to each other, like McDonald's and Burger King. You've seen the classic ads when people are, you know, getting <laughs> McDonald's and they're, you know, taking this kid's lunch meal every time they show up and then eventually the kid decides to put a burger king sign on top of it and nobody wants to touch the his his chips <laughs> because he can now enjoy it so it's like you hear you see those kind of brand experiences apple samsung i've done that before you know chick-fil-a popeyes has done that before right you've seen brands do this right when you see two brands talking to each other everybody goes wild because it's like, what could be happening? What's happening? What's going on, right? So when your brand is also doing that too as a business and you're partnering with other brands, big brands, they're like, oh, okay, you connect with this company or that company. And that also shows in the, in the proof that you actually work with companies that have that credibility. So that marketing even makes it easier for you because if you're marketing and you're organically marketing, you're showing up, you're giving people information, they're learning from you, they're actually taking notes, they're actually taking action and they're actually taking your advice. And then that advice turns into a couple of dollars or a currency for them, this international app. So they're getting paid for their time in exchange. Then the way they advertise is, is, is to the moon, right? It's to the stars, it's to the rest of the world, because now you can connect with people on a large scale and there's no barrier of entry. But I think nobody can really sell a product if there's no community value attached. What do y'all think of it? Does does community value have to attach to a sale or could you just buy anything because you like it and you see it? I think you have to attach. I think you have to be so, have so much clarity and so much belief around what you're selling and conviction. And if you do that, then you can sell it. But if you don't, then you can't. That's what I think. Okay. John, what do you think? Uh, for me, it's, it's really, 
Again, I don't sell. I, for example, I'm, I'm working on an ad right now for an advertiser. Does anybody here on stage know what a desiccator cabinet is? Because that's what the advertiser is. It's very small, very niche product, but it's hard to get to reach. Does anybody know what that is? I'm not endorsing them. I'm, they're an advertiser. Where a lot of people, I think, miss an opportunity and misunderstand is they think they have to endorse a product in order to be an advertiser. And they don't see the distinction between, two, between the two. When I turn on television and I watch, for example, Yellowstone, and I see a Dodge truck commercial come on, I don't believe in any way that that's a statement by Yellowstone and producers. I know it's a commercial. So why do people do the same when it comes to um, their social media, their email newsletter, or the podcast? That's a tough one, John. But if you think about it, though, it's an ad slot. And it has an affinity, but it, it, it may be indirect, you know, but at the same time, it's like, is that what they intended to say? Or are they subliminally saying it without saying it? It's it's hard to tell, but at the same time, like there's proof in the pudding, but you also can't just actualize it or just realize it. I, I think part of it is, and, and I'll yield the mic on this, that um, when you do host read ads, people don't charge more for them. And when they do endorsements, they don't charge more for them. They do the standard rate and they do the, the CPM deal, which I believe stands for costing podcasters money or some people say millions because you're giving away a product and a service and your word based off something that's solely, that's solely a commercial uh, and you're making yourself partly responsible for their experience. That doesn't come free. If you want me to say, this is the best mattress I've ever used. I'm going to sleep on that mattress and you're going to pay me more. Otherwise, you're just an advertiser. And everything's going to be changed from they our need to or send my you, day. mail you that mat mattress too, right? I um, had a radio spot I did for years in uh, Southern Maryland in, for a cable company. Um, they gave me free cable and there was no cable to the house. They had to dig it. Uh, so they did all that. Otherwise, I wouldn't say me or mine. I'd say they or theirs. Um, I would not personally endorse it. And we got paid more. We got a fee every week for doing that. So that's where a lot of podcasters sell themselves short. They don't demand um, their, their worth, if you ask me. Ooh, that's a good one. Thank you so much for that insight. Yeah, it, it definitely plays a lot into, you know, the role and, and where it's going to. Thank you for that. Eric, thanks for joining today. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. So I'm curious how much control, um, I forgot the name of the TV show with the Dodge ad. Because I know the ads that I'm seeing are targeted specifically to the what's built into my smart TV. And I can tell that because I'll be watching a show or a series under dad profile, and then I'll go over to the other profile and pick up episode six or episode seven. And it's like, I've never seen that. Oh, it's because that profile tends to lean in this direction with what it watches or when it has to make the choice between A, B, and C when one of those Geico commercials comes up. So now all of the advertisers are buying slots specific towards that profile versus my profile, which is over here. And so when you talk about product placement or endorsements, it's almost like the analog or the algorithm, I'm sorry, is dictating the product placements or the endorsement more than the celebrity or the product itself. You're correct, Eric. That's about um, programmatic ads. They're delivered in a different way. And they're usually set up strictly these commercials. I'm, I'm talking about like host red ads and baked in stuff. Um, and so, but like uh, if I watch Yellowstone on television, I may see different ads in different spots. What they do make, and a lot of people don't understand this is, um, and it's numbers count, but they do get paid for product placement. You see, for example, in a movie and you see the person's on a computer and it's got the Apple logo. Trust me, Apple's paying to be there uh, one way or the other. 
Uh, but in the content, that's why you won't see in a lot of places where it's blurred out or there is no logo. I had a friend that that was her sole job was she had a list of products that she would have to basically run around trying to get placement and budget placement. And I mean, it's a whole different level of ad purchasing where it's like, okay, I've got this company, this is their marketing budget, but they want it devoted to ad placement within a, you know, within a TV series or within a movie. And uh, that was her whole job. And I thought that's really interesting that you've got to convince the actor, so to speak, to drink a Coke instead of a Pepsi. And what are they going to get by, by holding that versus the movie versus the, the production company? Yeah, I think it also plays a role into viewership, affinity, you know, longevity, because those films, videos, commercials, they're going to be there forever. So those brand partnerships also affects, you know, the economies of scale, affects, you know, their bottom line, the results, the people that connect with them, the stories that happen afterwards. It's a whole mesh. So I think it's also great to think about, like, where you also stand and, you know, where your public, where, where your content is just displayed and what networks are you being shown on that also justifies your brand. Because you can be shown on, let's say, CNN for the whole day and that's the audience you're connecting with. And then somebody else is being shown on, you know, another platform or Fox on all day. That's what they're getting. So those two audiences with two different ad sets with a completely set of different people are still getting to that media line or that medium that is, okay, is this brand something we can connect with? Is this marketing message making sense to me? Is advertising relevant to my liking? And is this sale relevant to my lifestyle? So people ask those questions as they think about those brands. And then along the way, they're able to say, okay, we'll experience it, we'll try it. And then if it's not, you know, we'll, we won't try it again. So I think there's usually a, a, a blend to it as well. So that that is huge. Angelica is saying with her streaming and stuff, she's paying four hundred and fifty dollars a month for cable, TV, and internet. That's wild. Does anyone have anything to say about that? That's insane. <laughs> I'm shocked. Okay. Well, you see. And and let me just go back to the bottom line because this is what I thought about when I read those numbers. You're paying it to those brands. The cable, TV, and internet, it's a brand that you're paying it to. So that's a brand that you like. That's a brand that you stand for. And those are the brands that you choose. Like when you get into a home or you get into a space, you'd find out what works. There's a time I remember when I was in Atlanta and around the Lawrenceville area, um they have google fiber and that was my first time when i was getting an apartment at that time years ago and i was i was like okay this is really cool let me let me see what they have so i asked about their internet provider services and they're like oh they had google fiber so i didn't even know there was something like google fiber i didn't even know google had a product that included internet services right and this is way before like starlink now which is you know elon musk's um satellite for for internet you know so if I knew about Google Fiber and then I go to another place and they don't have it. Now I can't experience that brand because they didn't build a satellite or they didn't concentrate to those areas. So it's like everyone has their own thing. You know, there's a Publix, there's a, there's a Kroger, there's a Wegman, there's a Target, there's a Walmart. You know, everyone's going to go to Trader Joe's, people are going to Whole Foods. People will go where they want to go because they feel like their time in there or even HEB, you know, they'll find places that they can connect with because they're associated with those brands. Maybe you've been going there all your life, or maybe that's what you only know, or maybe you just don't like trying new things, you know, or maybe you like trying new things. Those are the things that keep people and keep brands alive. And if we can affiliate ourselves with those markets and we can actually understand what those markets are doing for us, it, it really plays a big role into how advertising comes into where we spend our time on. Last question I want to ask before we wrap this up in the next couple of minutes till 9.45 Central. I want to ask everyone in the room, I'll start off with you, Julie. What brand do you see out there that, I won't say you can't live without, but a brand that you really support and love because of what they stand for? 
this, these mics, sticky mics. Let me think really fast. What brand do I really love? And I'm dedicated to that. I believe in what they stand for. Oh my God. I can't go first. I, I have to think about this for a second. Okay. No Sorry. Problem. It's a no great problem. question. I just want to make sure I answer it correctly <laughs> instead of just saying McDonald's. No problem. John? Uh, the answer for me will be none. Um, there are brands I will refuse to do business with because of, of the policy and the stances they've made uh, and the decisions they make. But uh, really, the overriding factor for me as a consumer is, do I need the product? Do I want the product? Can I afford the product? Uh, if the answers to those three are not there, then chances are it doesn't really matter what you do. I'm not going to be a com consumer of your content or a product, a purchaser of your product. Okay. Carrie? A brand that I'm really passionate about is Creative Con, which a oh, lot me of too. people... Me too. Me too. <laughs> um... Me three, me three, Carrie. That's I didn't right. think of that one. That's right. Me four. Come on, Eric. Can we have it five? Five out of five. He he probably doesn't even know what that is. But <laughs> oh, I've heard about Creative Con. I it's all the buzz. I just you know, I'm not sure I'm worthy to sit in the audience. Can someone smack Eric in the face? He's more than worthy. He's worthy to speak on a stage. What are you talking about? You know, brand loyalty is really tough for me because there's the like the user interface side of brand loyalty, and then there's the corporate side of brand. And so there's certain brands that I just I like. They just make it easy for me, so I'm loyal to that brand because of how they interface with me. But then I'll you know hear like, oh, you can't support such and such because they're endorsing such and such, and they also you know, fun this and that. And I'm like, why did they have to ruin it by telling me what was behind the curtain? So I can't answer it in, but, you know, with total amnesty, so to speak, but like Apple, it's like, I know what I get. I know where I'm going to get it and I know how to interact with it. And so it's ease of use creates loyalty to me. Mm, I love that. Okay. Huh. This is a deep one. Julie, have you thought of one? It's it's hard. I mean, I have brand loyalty like to certain food products. I have brand loyalty towards um, clothing products. I guess I love shopping at Zara. I, I love their kind of classic looks, their price points. Um, I love organic skincare, which gives plants a tree for every single product I buy. Then I love you know, Lexus is a car dealership or a car brand because they never die. At least in my experience, I've you could have one of those cars for 20 years and never have a problem. So I go back and forth. There's different reasons why I'm attracted to different brands, but usually it's really solid brands that I look good in. Like creative I like brand. what Julie brought up, that nostalgic factor of creating brand. Like I may not be loyal to the brand's current, but they've always been a trusted friend or I remember my dad having a Buick, so I'm gonna have a brand loyalty to a Buick type thing. You know what I mean? It's like, is our brand loyalty nostalgia or is it current? What kind of car, I mean, cars are a great example of brand loyalty. People are so, so, supportive of one brand like you you know a lot of people they'll only buy hondas or toyotas or fords they'll only buy american or they want to buy the kind of upper class like a mercedes so i think that just knowing your car i bet you everyone here is kind of a has a car brand loyalty i'm just gonna say i know john i think does I'm guessing Eric does, but yeah, people love car cars are a great like stepping point. People are let's, so loyal to a car. Brand. Let's put Julie on uh, the, the 
pressure cooker. So what vehicle brands am I most loyal to? You, I believe, Lexus and Cadillac Escalade. No, um, he's he's suburban, and um, I'm gonna say like Toyota. Am I right? Chevrolet and Toyota. I'm. Uh, we have two of. What brand of motorcycle am I most likely to purchase? Harley. Until now. Okay, maybe not Harley. I didn't. Really get that. <laughs> but my husband has a Harley. Like crazy about it. his Harley is like twenty years right. old. Right. Harley. But see, here's the thing: like we are considering buying another vehicle, but it's be one that meets our needs today, not necessarily the brand. Um, and right now, Chevy doesn't have anything that meets our needs. Chevy, Chevy Malibu doesn't meet no, our needs. No, it doesn't. The gas mileage is Excuse not good. Uh, I'm, it, it doesn't, and the longevity is questionable. Oh, Toyota. Yeah. You love Toyota. You love your to Toyotas. Yeah, they've been good. They've been very good to us. So that's something we're looking at. Again, this goes back to a, a lot of people put too much, in my opinion, too much emphasis on brand loyalty instead of meeting the needs of consumer. This is good. I love that. I, yeah, hundred percent. I think when it comes to branding, there's, there's definitely value attached to it. Uh, Angelica says Neiman Marcus. Um, and then she said, Julia, I'm loyal to Honda and Dodge. Chris says Lexus, Porsche. And, um, Moran says, I think it's a Prius, the Toyota Prius. Um, why a Prius? Oh my goodness. Wait, why? <laughs> that is very specific. Uh, I don't know. I know it's a hybrid. I know it has a, yeah, it's, I think it's a hybrid. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the shape of that car just does not do it for me. It, it just doesn't get, I don't know why. Why would they shape it like that? I mean, the efficiency is great, but you got to stand out in the process. I don't know. Have you, have you all seen a Prius? Do you like the look of it or nah? I like the function of it more than the looks, uh, but my mother, a lot of the things that the, the hybrid, my mother has a Toyota RAV4 hybrid. You know, that thing is an SUV and it gets almost 50 miles a gallon. Compare that to my Chevy Suburban, which we don't need because we don't have big dogs anymore. We don't haul motorcycles, all that stuff. It gets 15 on a good day. It's a big difference. And size and usable space is about the same. The longevity, she's got almost 300,000 miles on a Toyota for uh rav4 hybrid hmm okay i mean i love this i love the the comfortability of it i think just the way they built it maybe they didn't care for it but it definitely works you know people buy efficient things if they need to so 100 percent. yeah huh okay okay for me i would say a brand that i love and support and i love what they stand for you guys may not expect this answer from me it's a little bit out of the ordinary, but I'm a huge lover, fan of Manchester City FC as a brand and not because of two things. And somebody asked me this yesterday and I was like, yeah, these are the two reasons I keep saying it. One, because I love tur turquoise. That's that's my favorite color. There's something about it. It's just it just screams good quality. Good, you know, it just has a good sign to it. When you see turquoise, you're always gonna be happy about it. And that's what their their main color is. It's blue, but that kind of shade. And then secondly, how they operate. You know, the mentality that the team has because the way they operate, the way they move. Like when they lose one game, like I feel it too in a way like i'm like i feel like i'm part of them you know some people like they watch games and everything for me it's mental because it's like what they're doing and how they're winning you know they're winning trophies they're winning cups they're winning things it's like that win 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 mentality and then when you lose the way they win back or the way they come back is 10 times harder like it's like whoa okay i can actually do this more so that mentality for me is a big thing because when i look at a brand i'm looking at what they how they connect with each other what they i see them every week you know every weekend when they're playing or in between the week so i look at that and i'm like okay these guys are winning because of the way they think about their tactics if you go on netflix and you check manchester 
city you can even see their documentary like check them out and see what they do like yeah it's good to watch all these games soccer games football games but i also look at behind the scenes like what do they what does each individual player bring to the table and that allows me to also think like what would i bring to the table if i was in a team like this so it's about teamwork making the dream work and when everybody shines you shine too and when everyone's lifting the trophy you're not the only one lifting it you know other people are lifting it with you because there was support from the jump the medical staff right to the assistant manager to the janitor to the to, to the ceo of the, to the president like there's there's a connection between all these things so that's how i see it it's a little bit like top level and that's how i'm able to interact and still build into what i do here consistently which is consistency and quality too so those were really great answers as well so thank you all for those insights this is a great room y'all i hope you learned something about branding marketing advertising and sales when you're looking at the brands that you pay even some people when they you know support brands they buy stocks from those brands you know they they buy they actually try to get a stake you know of those brands because they also want to be part of you know the community and also adding to their contribution so when you think about the long-term effects of your business where do you stand and where do you you know put in all the things together so that was that was really great so i'll start off with you eric and then we'll go all the way back to julie eric let people know who you are and connect with you how you'd like them to and also let them know what what is one thing you want them to leave with from this room and then we'll go on to Carrie, John and Julie. Oh wow, not prepared. Okay, Skinny Brown Dog Media, editor in chief. We help people build brands and businesses based on their big idea that often starts with a book. So you can chase us down at skinnybrowndogmedia.com. Thank you, Eric. Carrie. Um I don't really have anything to close with. Author. What really? Author. What'd you say? You're an author. I, oh yeah, the dogs agree. I didn't hear what you said. Say it again. You're an, you're an author? That's true. Okay. Yep. You're an author, you're a podcaster, you're a top level <laughs> photographer. You name it as a lot. You're a big deal. <laughs> I do some stuff. <laughs> I'm also creative, um, the teacher of talent for Creative Con. <laughs> oh my God, you are. <laughs> I've heard about Creative Con. Just, Where can I learn more? Just here to support uh, my good friends. Yeah, and, he just uh, asked the question. You're not doing very good at director of talent. I, I can't hear, I have really bad service, so I keep hearing like half of what everyone's saying. So what was the question? I've heard about Creative Con. Where can I learn more? You can go to creativecon.com and all the And you can see the different advertisers who are behind it, the board members and um julie we're still doing the speaker call right so we have actually we have first yes and also we have some big names already more but it's going to be amazing the venue's amazing we're really excited you have to come yeah we can't wait to have you there eric please show up if you're available, that would be great to have you there too. John? Unlike Carrie, um, I don't know if I have anything to offer. Um, <clears throat> I have a nationally syndicated radio show called Law Enforcement Talk. We have 121 affiliate stations now broadcasting weekly to 44.5 million combined population. We estimate uh, at about two and a half to, to four million listeners per episode. Then episodes going live as a podcast, and currently it's top ranks as a top 0.5% ranked podcast worldwide. Um, so social media is my, is one of the tools I use, and anything I can use to help people expand their presence, uh, more than happy to share. Uh, I don't have a service or product that I sell, so um, just go to letradio.com and get more information. Thank you so much, John. Julie? I am Favor's best friend. 
and I love everybody on here. What I love to do is facilitate your dreams. I get people on stages. I get people connected with the right people to facilitate what you're looking for. I am a creative and founder of CreativeCon, and I can't wait to have Eric Reed on stage this year. Woohoo! Hey, can't wait, can't wait. Thank you all so much for listening. And I'm Favor of SEK. And you can connect with me here on Clubhouse, on LinkedIn. If you just look at my profile, you'll be able to connect with me there. Send me an email if you need to. You can click the link above if you want to get more direct information on what we do. If you click on the podcast option, it will take you to the podcast called We Don't Play. And we're in season nine right now, and we have a lot of episodes we're rolling out. So if you are interested in learning how to build your brand and also have a longstanding business in 2024, 2025 and beyond, this is the time to really integrate into it. And when you click the link above and you sign up, choose the selections, whether it's marketing courses, SEO tips or services that you need, and we'll be able to get across to you as well. And very soon, I mentioned this yesterday, and I'll say one of them because there are three. And if you listen to SEO Sunday Room yesterday, you'll get those three. But the one I want to mention here is I'm planning to bring workshops in on how people can actually do SEO for themselves, DIY SEO workshops, podcasts, Pinterest, how to run ads. If you want to run ads on billboards, where to go. So I'm going to be doing some really cool workshops, you know, this holiday season. So just stay tuned because I'll be bringing them to you and you'll be able to get your tickets so you can have access to it beforehand so that you can also prepare your business, your creatives and, you know, show up and show out for the people that you're showing up for. So I can't wait to have you all there. So thank you again, Julie. John, Kerry, Eric, Dr. Fashion, Mark, Billy, Ruth, Skylar, Chris. You've been here the whole time. Thank you so much for being here. Oswald, Rebecca, BM, Moran, Eddie, Kojo, and Eke. Thank you all so much for being here. Looking forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. I'll be here again bright and early. Can't wait to connect with you all. Have a blessed week start, and I'm going to catch y'all soon.